Hi, everyone. Welcome to Slam Fire Radio, episode 338. Let's fill up Pua edition for January 23rd, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Kelly. Girls pointing at me, so I guess that's me. I'm Random Dave, another <laughs> one of your hosts, just a little slow on the uptake. <laughs> and I'm Adriel. I'm just here to break the show, essentially. Sweet. Doing You're doing well. well. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's and sweet. Trevor's not with us. Uh, he, he he asked us to make sure that we uh, referred to the Lapua episode quite a bit. So, Lapua. Tre- Tre- Trevor, wanna- Trevor, Trevor is not dead. He is still with He's us. Still with He's us. just not with us physically. Yeah. Yes. Nobody oh. has murdered him surprisingly. Surprisingly, I haven't. After and I, uh, I haven't. <laughs> so uh, he is not here, but we wish him luck and uh, yeah, hope he survives the man cold that he has. Right. Okay. He's, He's still- just joined to watch. Oh well, then get his ass on the episode then. Yeah, well enough to watch you well enough to get in here. <laughs> Hi, Trevor. Uh, I'm Trevor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why don't we talk about what we did in guns this week? So what we did in guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center. It's Canada's premier firearms retailer. Right now they have Trigicon, SROs, 2.5 MOA on sale. And it is, we've been talking a lot about putting optics on or um, putting optics on um um, pistols, thank you. Mm-hmm. Brain fart. Uh, so Adriel actually picked this and put it into the show notes. So why don't we just follow along with that? Um, yeah. yeah. It's round. So it's got a button sorry? on the side that makes yeah. it go on, I think. And yes. then you put the you put the dot on the target and you press the and trigger. And you go bang. Yeah, it's so point, point and <laughs> click. And because and it's it trigger on, it'll be reliable. And yeah, it looks pretty durable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it puts the red dot on so, its skin. Adriel, remember <laughs> what you said when you uh, posted this and uh, the price tag on it? What's the price tag on it again? It's eight fifty. Yeah. So your thoughts on eight fifty for that? It's more than some <laughs> of the other red dots out there, but it's a trigicon, and like there's, yeah. uh, especially for the first for the first batches of red dots that are on the slide for pistols. Yep. The, the, what I've heard is that the Trigicons were the only ones that would survive for a long period of time. And a lot of the other ones, mm-hmm. the loopholds and those kind of things, were not surviving. You'd go a few thousand rounds <laughs> and uh, they'd start dying. So yeah, that's just what I've heard. I mean, you, get your, you get your slides slamming back and the, 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 poor little, the poor little red dots going with it, hitting the stop and then slamming forward again. I mean, that's, that's like you, you're shaking that baby. Yep. Yeah, and there's battery contacts and a little LED diode that has to be perfectly hitting this little spot on the glass. And if it's not hitting that perfect little spot on the glass, then you miss. And yep. yeah, there's a there's a lot that can go wrong on those things. So they do need yep. to be bulletproof, and they do need some some decent engineering in them. Yeah. So you're gonna spend eight hundred and fifty bucks on it? No, I'll probably just buy Vortexes, and every time they die, I'll mail them back. <laughs> <laughs> I would, like, if, if, if it was for a competition pistol, I would not do that. I would get a, a nicer red dot, but since it's just for, like, a, a messing around uh, gun, yeah. um, I don't care if I'm out for a month while it's going back to somewhere. That's true. For, and Vortex has lifetime warranty, so That's, I yeah. can use and abuse that as much as I want to. Right. But you'll you still could, buy it from the Calgary Shooting Center. If they have good absolutely, prices, absolutely, but because they, they actually they us. will because Vortex is map pricing, anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could grab uh, one, grab one of those uh, Trichicons and slap it on uh, Mel Gerson slide and stick around there. Well, I was gonna, I'm going to put it on my Norinco MP29, so you're not far <laughs> off. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, put an eight hundred and fifty dollar optic on my three hundred dollar pistol. Yeah, that's, that's worse. I like it. Hmm. Hmm. Adriel. Yeah. Why don't you tell us what you did in guns this week? All right. Uh, I got my letter back from my mail letter campaign. I sent a letter to my local MP, Trudeau, Blair. Nice. And my local MP mailed me back. And he's like, yeah, we're going to get those liberals. And we're going to like fight all this stuff. And rah, rah. But it was it was like a form letter re- response back. At least I got something oh. back. I wonder how many he got. I'm sure that... Know. Alberta. Uh, probably a lot. Yeah, Alberta in general is pretty active on this stuff. When I was looking at the uh, petition, I think Alberta had the most sign- signatories. 
on the petition per yep. licensed PAL member. I think yep. it was like 5% of POP, so we're pretty active in that kind of stuff. That's um, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyways, got a letter back. That was neat. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, uh, let's see what else. I, and then uh, my buddy uh, from 3Gun, uh, he was a listener of the show too, he uh, he texted me on Facebook. He's like, hey, you want to shoot a, a Laugo alien? And come yeah. to the range and shoot it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course I do. So, uh, so we had an impromptu uh, range trip over to uh, Phoenix, which is like an indoor gun range here. Yep. And uh, shot the Lago Alien, shot his nice. uh, CZ Checkmate open gun with uh, uh, Red Dot on there and a big comp and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then my other buddy came out and he brought his uh, stainless STI DVC in 40. And then he had, nice. he had a 1911 that's like all tuned up and uh, super custom. He's, uh, he's One of his buddies uh, does uh, custom gun works and... Uh, Customize the heck out of this thing. Put like little cool little like frame cuts into it, into the slide, oh. and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So I was shooting all that, uh, and then my Shadow Two, which was uh, even with all the parts on it, still the cheapest gun on 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 the table. Yeah. <laughs> we're shooting. That's, That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's something else to, nice. to to go to the gun range with three buddies and just bring a couple of pistols each and have uh, twenty thousand dollars of pistols <laughs> right on the table, <laughs> right yep. on the table. Yeah. Yeah. How was the alien? Uh, okay, so there's some like good and good things, and then there's some some bad things about the alien. The good things, the bore axis is just ridiculous. Like it's so low into your hand, it yeah. is like the barrel Part is of your in hand. line <laughs> with your with the top of your hand. Cool. And you would think like, okay, well maybe I'll get a lot of shock like in the webbing of my hand. Not so yeah. much. Got it a lot uh, a lot just down in the palm here. So okay. when the gun came off, it felt like you just got a slap there. And huh. uh, like right in the meat of your uh, your thumb there. I don't know what part of the palm that's called, but uh, the meat of your thumb. Uh, so like, yeah, every time you fire it, like I would I wouldn't describe it as like soft shooting because I th- I felt like my shadow was softer, but my shadow had more muzzle flip to it, whereas the alien just slapped you in the hand every time it fired, which was uh, which was really interesting. I think if, if I had more time behind that one, I would be uh, hammering that m- more than my shadow. But I got like, I've got thousands of rounds through the shadow and just more used to it, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, that was really cool. And then the cycling was so fast because it's just got like this tiny little uh, bit of slide that moves and it uses a gas delayed uh, blowback system on it. So the slide is basically locked in place by the high pressure gas coming out of the, uh, or just behind the bullet. And once the bullet gets out, then it allows the slide to come back. So doing that allows them to use a very lightweight uh, slide on it. And uh, there's, it reciprocates so fast. Like you fire it and you don't even notice that it, that it really fired. Uh, and the other thing that cool. helps there is that the sights the sights stay still. The slide moves, mm-hmm. the sights stay still. There's some pistols yeah, out there that's with really uh, cool. yeah, island barrels or, or like where the where the sights might stay on there. Um, most red dot pistols and the and the alien comes with both an iron sight top and a red dot top. And you just kinda like hmm. swap out the upper and I don't want to shoot our irons anymore. <laughs> Pull that off, put a red dot on there and, and that red dot doesn't cycle. So when you fire you're looking through the target, and your red dog and is consistent. And hmm. stays doesn't, there. doesn't move. Yeah. So you also wouldn't get that battering that you get with a, a slide-mounted optic, right? Do you know how much the MSRP is on that? Uh, they're right around fifty eight hundred bucks, six grand, mm. somewhere around there. Yeah, you got rich friends. <laughs> <laughs> the open gun is cheap, either. <laughs> yeah. but it's it's. Uh, comes with a red pretty dot. Pretty cool, though. Yeah, it comes <laughs> yeah. with a red dot. You don't and, need the uh, Chinticon 850 on it. <laughs> nope. And in terms of uh, in terms of tech, like the yeah. technology on it is really cool. It, it is really, really groundbreaking in terms of like what it's trying to do. That stuff's all crazy. Uh, there's not there's not a pistol out there that is like that tuned in and that crazy right off the hop, right off like let's make a pistol. Okay, what should we do? Let's take pistol design and throw that out and what would make this thing like the best uh the the mags were really weird the mags were it looks like they took the top half of like a a, some other mag out there and they like Mm -hmm. chopped off the bottom and put on this aluminum thing on the bottom i I, that's probably because we have like 10 round limits here in canada yeah we got like this little bit weird solution where they use like these allen bolts in the side i was a little bit Mm. off uh 
the dust cover gets hot with extended firing. So if you fire it like a whole bunch, because it uses that gas delayed blowback, you're getting hot gas in uh, to the piston, which is just underneath no, the barrel, yeah. which is the just uh, on the dust cover there. So the dust cover gets a little bit warm uh, as you... A I little bit warm? Or like, is it like uncomfortably warm? Remember that HP that was gas... Uh that was gas fed that would get hot enough you couldn't even touch it uh i don't know if it would be an issue or not because like okay so and and the reason why i say i don't know if it'd be an issue in an ipsic match max you're going to be shooting is like 40 rounds fast 40 rounds you don't really touch the uh the uh dust cover on the bottom the rail there right your thumbs are up on the side mm. i didn't feel it other than when i was putting the gun down i'm like oh that's warm that's that's got some heat on the bottom there uh which which was interesting uh yeah. and the other the other thing i noticed was uh with the optic on there is actually a little bit hard to uh, to rack like compared to the uh the checkmate open gun with the uh, slide racker on the side you just grab it and slap it to the back some of the other uh uh red dot pistols that have the red dot on top if it's a good red dot you can just slap that thing to the rear and that's your yeah, slide racker now play. right Right. Whereas with the alien with the red dot on top, and then it's, it's kind of like these got these two little rails on the side. You got to like pinch those and pull it back to uh, to work the sides. So that's mm -hmm. a little bit a uh, little bit harder than if it had a racker or some, or you could rack off the red dot, which um, some guys I see do. But uh, really cool piece of tech, really really cool piece of tech, and uh, I don't think there's very many of them in Canada. So I was super happy to, <laughs> to go and try one out so early, and not not at a range day. Where they've got one that's uh, that they know is going to work and all that kind of stuff, or and where it like it's coming straight out of the box and it's opening and it's being fired for the first time right in front of me mm -hmm. and everything, right? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool times. Uh, and then other than that, I've just been uh, emailing some people about Maple Seed and trying to set up some dates and sweet some signed hosting agreements and all that kind of stuff because Fantastic. it's going to be a a busy uh, Maple Seed uh, year, and I'm going nice. to. A three gun meeting tonight to uh, help the guys uh, set up some of those uh, dates for the season. Dates as well. for there. You're yep. going to be a busy man, man. Nice. Yeah. All right, Dave, why don't you tell us what you've been doing? You haven't been on for a couple of weeks. So. Hey, I actually did stuff. Woohoo! Yay, I did stuff. <laughs> um, I sent the letters in. So this is like from Christmas, but I finally got my letters in over christmas so better late than never to the party so that's done for the uh the ban protest letters yeah. uh bought some assorted tools and bits and bobs i needed a new um i needed a new uh punch kit because i broke some of my punches and they were kind of crappy anyway so oh, fix, break fixing my shadow oh okay fixing my shadow trying to get those uh trying to get those pins out that somebody had uh <clears throat> had crimped in where they shouldn't have been so <laughs> Thank you very much to uh, Adam, who got my hammer and disconnector back to me, which I then threw out. But I kept the uh, I kept the um, what the hell's it called? It's a, a spring strut. So I got the Shadow Two hammer and Shadow Two disconnector that I bought from Adriel off on it. The Shadow Two disconnector is a different shape than the Shadow One disconnector, the SPO One disconnector, but it worked. It worked perfectly. Cool. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. So whatever, I put it together. I figured, man, nah, I'm used to taking the gun apart now anyway, so I'll throw all the parts in and see if it blows up. And it didn't blow up. And it worked great. And I've put about 300 rounds through it, most of it fairly rapid fire since then. And it's been absolutely flawless. So my, my semi-fully auto shadow is now fully semi-auto. So oh, it's fixed. Nice. My rear sight is still out, which I can't get the sight to drift. So I may have to find a tool to get it to move. But uh, other than that, so it shoots consistently a little bit to the left, but it's enough that at 25 yards, I'm out by probably two inches. Part of that's me, part of that's the sight. So once I get that sight set up, I'm good. But I was so happy to get that gun back. I forgot how nice shadows are to shoot. That thing is just gorgeous. And it just it shoots darts. Uh, what else did I did? I took my 12-year-old nephew out to the range. So he fired my shadow. He fired Sweet. my 1911 and 45, which he only fired once. He wasn't very impressed with that. That was a bit <laughs> much. I shot a slow motion video of him firing just so he could see how much it recoils. And it's just boom. <laughs> Light guns just straight up in the air. 
I only had one round in the mag yeah. just in case. So, but uh, he loved the shadow. He was he was firing off full mags out of the shadow and doing quite well at ten yards. Uh, he fired my ten twenty two. So we did a little maple seed training. The ten twenty two standing and seated. And um, yeah, he was shooting about you know th- three inch groups at twenty five yards with it when the time we were done. And that's with you know no cheek piece on it and a super high crappy 1980s optic and he did really well so that was that was really good uh, my gunny girls calendars arrived thank you Kelly. thank you ccfr so got those got those registered uh i got some 357 shot shells from a friend so that was fun i don't know what i'll do with them but i'll put them down my lever action and put okay, a little time in the target 57 shot shells yeah 357 magnum shot shells they're like number seven bird shot i think oh. <laughs> it's like little teeny bitty bird shot so I think they're for taking a front of a 357. That's for rats and that kind of thing, eh? Yeah, exactly, for mm-hmm. pest control. But uh, I'm like, ah, whatever. So I got a box of them sitting at home. So I may take them to a I may take them to a vintage CQB match and just pepper a few targets for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've, used, like, hey, I've used the 22 that? ones for <laughs> uh, uh, inside a barn or something like that with a with a yeah. tin roof. If you can yep. use those to take out uh, sparrows and that kind of thing fairly fairly easily. Okay. Yeah, I, I assume this is primarily meant for handguns if you're out in a desert or whatever and you're trying to take out snakes and rats and little pests and things like that. I don't think I'd want to hit anything too close with it because it's got a, a solid plastic wad at the front of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think that would over 357 would probably put a pretty big hole in, say, a tin roof at close range. Well, you said it was seven and a half shot too? Yeah, it's like little teeny weeny pellets. Mm. Hmm. So. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. So I got some of those. I should actually shoot skeet with them <laughs> <laughs> with my lever gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would kind of be funny. Are we going to shoot some skeets out here or what, boys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to go. Make sure you put the extra ammo in the in the leather side saddle thing so you like reload from that into yeah. into the gun. <laughs> Good to go. We love that at trap at trap clubs. That would be funny. I I, I may do that. We'll see. Uh, what else did I do? I went to, oh, Maple Ridge Armory. They've got a new, um, the manufacturing fellows, they've got a new, um, a new retail store in Barrie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they opened a retail store. So I dropped by there on my way up to Aurelia, the gun club, to pick up my membership and do a little more 22 shooting. And uh, super nice guys, a tiny little store uh, at the back of a, an industrial section, but it's very nicely set up. They have Decent selection. I mean, it's fairly, I'm not sure what the square footage is, but it's small. But uh, good selection of handguns, bunch of ARs. They had a ton of their own stuff there because they manufacture handguards and their own rifles and all sorts of stuff, barrels. And uh, so checked all that stuff out. They had their scratch and dent sale, which was only in the store. So I picked up um, a 17-inch, one of their lovely uh, M-Lock handguards for my AR-15 build I'm working on. So got that for like 200 bucks they're normally Ooh. three in a bed so yeah, that's a good deal yeah the anodizing is missing down a bit of anodizing on one side but i'm like i don't care i'm gonna throw it in a barrel and throw it in the dirt and yeah who cares mm-hmm. put some magic marker on it and i'm good or rattle can it uh beautiful handguard it is just, oh man you're just holding it and it's just oh this didn't come off uh this didn't come off uh alibaba like adriel's piece of crap <laughs> this thing's awesome i got one of those too i've got one of the uh yeah. maple ridge ones yeah and yeah, they're, they're it really feels nice. soft in the hand it's a yeah. chunk of aluminum but it feels nice and soft and that's how you can tell yeah. like oh this is made right the difference. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah i like the machining on it i'm like caressing the thing just the machining on it and everything and it's perfect size when you've got the gun out mm-hmm. it's a it's a really really nice handguard and uh hung around the store I, I showed up like half an hour before closing so i was only there for half an hour 40 minutes so did they know uh, who random dave was i didn't even say <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to start doing my do you know who I am thing again <laughs> yeah. and post the videos online. Those amuse yeah. me. But uh, yeah, they uh, one of the guys has been out to a few of the ORA CQB matches. So I, I okay, sort of so you probably him. know him. Yeah, and they're a customer in the store that I, I knew from, from uh, Aurelian from the ORA as well. But uh, okay. super nice guys. Nice little variety in the store. They've still got a few scratch and dent things there. They got a ton of scratch and dent barrels. So if you're looking for AR barrels, there you go. Go pick Sweet. one up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, super nice guys. And uh, yeah, definitely going to go back. Really, uh, really enjoyed going in there. 
Uh, the Ontario Rifle Association, we got our dates in. So any ORA members that are uh, listening, if you haven't gotten the updates in, we got our dates in at the end of December. So we're just waiting for the base to get back to us. But we got a good uh, good slate of events this year. So it's going to be good. Sweet. Assuming, uh, you know, Justin doesn't muck with our year. It's going to be a good year. It's yeah. fine. He can go to hell. I'm not worried about that. Uh, <laughs> no, speaking just... of which, the uh, the petition, the E two three four one petition, is over a hundred thousand yep. signatures as of yeah. That yeah. happened today. Oh, cool. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that happened without <laughs> the whole twenty seven thousand unconfirmed emails. So get on that, people too. Yes, check your junk mail if you're waiting for an email back. Go just, and you got yeah, just for that a, a full explanation on that. If you uh, if you sign that thing, they're going to email you and saying like, verify your email. And if you don't do that, it doesn't count. You nope. got to verify your email. Yeah. Okay. And that's it, Kelly. What have you done? Well, uh, what have I done? My dogs are are fighting, so if you hear barking and all that i'll just go through it uh so what did i do last week i went to and did a a range day actually with a bunch of women you know it's the women that i consider hashtag my team uh so there (laughs) was uh, kelly kincaid and there's also tamara tamara's a gunny girl from this year and kelly kincaid is my alter ego here like kelly squared um she is a gunny girl from uh, two years ago Three, two, three, maybe. Anyways, two years ago. And um, then we also brought some new people to the range as well, a couple of new girls. And uh, also Bailey. Sorry, Bailey was a gunny girl this year as well, and she came to the range too. So we ended up actually spending about six or seven hours, six hours at the range. (laughs) Uh, So it was a pretty long day, but we spent, and it was cold too, by the way. Uh, So we spent the first portion of it in the uh, um, indoor range. We have an indoor pistol range. So we did pistols there and the table, you were talking about the gun table, Adriel, when you went shooting, Uh, we had, I think about 10 or 11 um, pistols. So the new shooters got to shoot, got to shoot every single one of them and they've, figure it out which one they liked the best. One of them liked my Glock 17 the best, which was odd. Uh, she got to shoot all kinds of different things. Like she got to shoot a CZ uh, Shadow 1, a Shadow 2. She got to shoot a SIG gun 1911. She got to shoot but um, an Excalibur. Um, yeah, but she hmm. kept coming back to the Glock 17. She really liked it. So some, said, people, okay. some people just have bad taste. <laughs> I think she liked it because it um, didn't have a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, and uh, nice and light and yeah. small. She, she was ex- like, I, she's just a natural. She had, uh, we were shooting from uh, 15 meters and she had, she was, she had a nice uh, little grouping and I'm going, holy crap. Uh, so she really, really enjoyed it. And uh, we heard from her after the shoot as well. She got so excited about it. She's decided that she's getting her pal Yay. and our pal and she's going to buy some pistols. Um, so we had we spent a couple of hours indoors and we had a great time shooting <coughs> just pistols. Uh, then what we did was we packed everything, all the pistols up and we went outside because we had ARs to shoot and we wanted to sh- show the ladies how to shoot those as well. I brought a couple other things. Like I brought my, my shotgun, my Benelli 12 gauge, and I bought my um, uh, maple seed 1022 and all that, but we ended up not shooting those. We just actually ended up shooting the ARs. So I was able to try my new Troy AR 15. I absolutely love it. Great a great trigger on it. Um, the um, Vortex Crossfire uh, Red Dot, fantastic. I was shooting at 30 meters and had, uh, it, we just did standing. So it was standing um, offhand and I was able to get a nice, you know, three inch group. Uh, and I was able to actually make a nice little happy face with, um, with my shooting so it was it was kind of cool but um really really enjoyed it i also got to try kelly's uh kelly actually names her guns this one was called hella it's a colt ar-15 it's the c uh c8 knockoff so i was able to try that fantastic it's it's a beautiful rifle 
And then Tamara actually brought uh, Tavor X95. So I was able to shoot that as well. And then all the ladies. Yeah, that was fun too. Um, All the ladies that are new shooters, they got to shoot them as well. And again, the lady that really liked my um, my, uh, my Glock. Anyway, she thought the ARs were incredible. She she was one of the ones that said, you know what, ARs, I don't know if I really want to shoot these. She's she's going, do we really need these? And after it was done, she goes, oh, my God, that was so much fun. I can see why people want to keep them and want to. So, again, as I said, she is wanting to go get her pal, and she wants to go and buy guns now. So nice. we, were wow. able to, we were able to convert some people. It was awesome. And there was one lady that had to leave early, and she's coming back because she didn't get to shoot the airs. So she's going to come back and, oh, and shoot those as she well. Know what she missed. I know. Yeah. She actually does because well. we shared pictures. She went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But it was a group of women who went shooting, and we had a really, really good time. We spent, like, hours on the range. We were cold outside, but that was still okay. We actually left just as it was getting dark. Um, I got to meet... Yeah, I got to meet up with um, Mario as well. So he came by on Sunday, and he was coming back from... Mario is one of the directors for the Maple Seed. So he was coming back from um, Toronto. He and his wife were there at the RV show. So uh, he was coming back. I met up with him. We talked about Maple Seed a little bit, but we just had a chance to get together as well. So that was fun. Um, anything else with guns I did this week? I don't think so. But I didn't. I didn't go to SFRC, which was weird. I spent my weekend working when I wasn't shooting. Oh well. Uh, that's about it with that. So, upcoming events. Uh, why don't we talk about TACOM? TACOM, t- TACOM Canada uh, 2020 is going to be on September 11th to the 13th. It's the Canadian Program Podcasters Network. They're going to be in attendance at TACOM 2020. Your favorite podcasts will be on hand throughout the show, uh, so make sure to drop, stop by the booth and meet some of your favorites and pick up some swag. Hey, Dave, are you going? Um, I have to check and see what weekend that is. I it's had the something same as here. yeah. It's the same as Meaford. Oh yes. Know. So yeah. no, I will be at Meaford. So okay. you'll have to you'll have to uh, you'll have to stand in for me. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna be. I'm gonna be at Meaford too. Sure, yeah, are you sure. coming this year? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. Why not? Get in the car. Come on out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Maybe, Adriel, we can convince them to fly in. Okay. Uh, or you can drop by while we do our special live broadcast where we'll have actually the event organizers there. We're going to have guest speakers and there's going to be vendors and they're going to talk about all the new product and all the must-have product that they have. You can see details for uh, the show at uh, tacom.com. And right now, if you stay tuned for the ticket release, it's going to be happening soon. It's going to be in uh, February. And if you're listen to podcasts i think there's going to be a podcast uh discount code so not think i know so wait for that in february we'll we'll make the announcement for that as well uh adriel you want to talk a little bit about the 10th annual podcasters charity shoot i know there's not really any new updates but it's going to be in new brunswick and it's going to be in rescue it's going to be awesome yeah Yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere your cell phone probably won't work uh, no, but there will be lots no. of shooting, and that's the important yes. part. We're gonna be doing I actually, a... I actually kind of like the people's cell phones don't work because other than taking pictures, nobody's on their damn cell phone. You have to no. talk to other human beings. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of this. At, at my my local club, Chaz, the same thing. You like, there's there's nothing. It is reception down you there. You don't have any. No, what so you talk? You talk to people. Yeah. 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 It's a nice change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you could talk to people while doing a mini steel challenge, uh, yep. shooting 22 pistol, 22 rifle, PCC, or handgun. Uh, you can t- also talk to people while doing your half round of trap. I think it's expected for trap that you talk in between shooting because it's kind of like a Something slow taste out thing. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be one self serve pistol bay set up for steel as well. So you can uh, chat around the uh, pistol bay and uh, shoot some pistols as well. So it's yep. going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yep. And uh, we hope we see you out there. Yes, yeah. we do. Because guess right. what, Adriel, you're going to be there this time. I was Dave? there last time too. Was that I don't know. Time? You, I'm talking Tacom. You're going. I'm not going. Wow. No. Right, Dave, you're going to be there. Oh yeah, of course. I already have my room booked and at uh, Chateau for Chateau for a lot. Okay, I'm going to be there. Yay! You're Yay! Bring the room 
And I think Trevor's going to be there because he's hosting it. You better oh. be there. Well, I'll stop. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be there at least. All of us. You can come and yep. meet us. Yeah. And it's it's always a, such a fun event. It's just it's, awesome. Out of the charity shoots, it's probably my most favorite. And the reason is because yeah. it's just like so relaxed, right? We have so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. And if you yeah, haven't been good. out to Restigouche, it's, it's beautiful. It's an awesome club, and the people are super nice. Like, yeah. it makes me hate my clubs. Really? Well, it's just so good. <laughs> okay. I'm like, you can't, uh, why don't we build stuff like this in Ontario? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, CFO, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, we do have on here uh, support officer Frank, the uh, GoFundMe fundraiser. Just wanted to let everybody know that we were able to meet uh, the um, GoFundMe goal of twenty thousand dollars. So um, we wanted to say thank you very much to everybody about that. The money is all going to go to Officer Frank. Uh, Trevor, maybe next week when if he's on, he can give us an update on how uh, um, Frank's doing. Um, but uh, we just wanted to say if he's listening. Uh, we we hope you actually uh, do get better, obviously, and we're glad and we're happy that we were able to do the the GoFundMe. Now I'm saying we, but quite honestly, it's all Trevor. Trevor worked really hard with this, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yay! So yeah. thank you. Thanks to everybody who kicked in a couple bucks. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, why don't we go into the news? Adriel, you actually were able to add this to the news, so why don't you uh, tell us about it a little bit? I mean, it's yeah, it's a, a pretty straightforward. There was the uh, uh, the Virginia rally where they had I don't know tens of thousands. So the estimates are around twenty, thirty, forty thousand people, somewhere around that. Uh, I most 30, of, most of them are armed. But, yeah. <laughs> now they had yeah. one area like a, a cage in the on on the hill where you couldn't be armed. And yep. couldn't wear a mask, and then everywhere else you could, and that's where they had too many people, anyways, to fit them all in the cage. So uh, most yep. people were outside. Most people were heavily armed. There was like a guy rolling around with like a, a Barrett fifty, <laughs> like yep. that was hilarious. Around, taking pictures with it and that kind of thing, and uh, uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, armed and no problems, no issues with the event. They even cleaned up afterwards. They yeah, cleaned, cleaned up the garbage. garbage. It was stuff. like awesome. Which like sounds weird, but a lot of these protests, like you move twenty five thousand people into an area, and it gets yep. it they trash the area because there's water bottles and garbage all over yeah. the place. But uh, not so much with this one because they were uh, pretty responsible about it. Yeah, they even wanted to, they needed to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they still uh, they're still pushing the laws forward. Like they they just passed their red flag law, and now now they're gonna pass some other ones. But uh, but they protested. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they showed up and said their piece. So. And, um, yeah, some of the stuff they're passing, good luck with that. Yeah. Because people down there are just like, yeah, we're just not going to obey that law. Well, not yeah. the, the people and, like, the sheriff and are the like, police. we're, we're not going <laughs> to well, do that. You That's see? unconstitutional. Yeah, in Oklahoma, there was uh, 20 um, sheriffs that are suing the, the, the state government because they don't, they don't want to enforce the law. They said it's unconstitutional. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, good yeah. for them. Yeah, there was a uh, there was a very funny Babylon B article, which was U.S. somber members of the PREF offered their thoughts and prayers that someone would start violence at the gun rights rally in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> and like that's that's not somebody our... starts it, yeah. And then guess what? You don't go to a place where somebody's yeah, you're not armed. going home. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I I laughed when I read it because I was reading some of the media coverage, and I'm like, these people are at the point of going, why aren't you people shooting each other? This is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, because. there's a lot of a lot of cheerleading for it. A lot of uh, these are white racist white supremacists and, who yeah. are like it's like no, they're they're just gun owners. Like this is not it's going to be okay, like Charlottesville. Know. It's like no, they did totally no. different people. It's not going to. So they started like posting pictures of all the different people at the at at the rally, and it's every it was atypical, and people weren't happy with that. Yeah, so, it yeah. reflected society. How exactly. dare they? How dare they not live up to yeah. the stereotypes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, American news, but still uh, still interesting and still kind it's interesting of, to kind see. of us. Yeah. Yeah, because we're basically going through the same sort of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
not the same sort of, but it's much worse. Yeah, yeah. much Can't walk around with <laughs> much <laughs> much here, though. It's much very worse. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. it's not the same sort of things. It's actually we're much already worse. way further down the road than they are. Yeah, no. Okay. All right, that's everything that was in the news. Why don't we get into the main topic? I think it's the main topic, anyways. You put mm-hmm. some stuff in here for the guns, new gun stuff, but we're going to use it as the main topic because guess what's happening right now, everybody? Shut show. Shut show. I was about to post the meme where it's you know, <laughs> brace yourselves, shot show, <laughs> shot show's coming up. All everybody's posting all their pictures of shot show. So all the Instagrams, um, all the Facebooks, everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's cool. All of our friends are down there. We're not down there. Um, but looks like it was actually a pretty good time. Everybody is having a good time posting photos and <laughs> photos of them with celebrities and and things like that. I didn't see too much about what was new and what was coming out, but apparently Adriel has a whole list of it. So why don't we start going through it, Adriel? Yeah, you bet. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is just go through some of the name ones. Uh, there's there were some that I picked out as uh, as particularly interesting or weird. Uh, yep. The first one uh, that I wanted to show show was this uh, Trijicon Ventus. Uh, it's a rangefinder that also maps the wind. What? Uh, it can see the wind downrange. I imagine they're using not moire, but uh, like it's got some lidar stuff going on. <laughs> and uh, it maps the wind not only where you're at, like normally you use an anim- yeah. anemometer and you right. see the wind where you're at, but like downrange is totally different because you're in a valley or whatever nonsense is going on. This yep. thing figures out the wind at range. So it can Sweet. take that into effect and then provide a ballistic solution that is better than what you would get if you just obtained your wind speed where you're at. That's very cool. That's awesome. It's we need that. super neat. Yeah. 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 But I also think that people should figure it out as well without using all the bells and whistles and gadgets too. But that's, uh, we're not pe- talking about that piece. We're talking s- about the new stuff. on People Death used, to, used to say the same thing about iron sights. Oh, yeah. you're going to use a scope. Nah, you should just figure it out using iron sights. Ah, uh, no. you're using a semi-automatic reload. Come on, what's the big deal? <laughs> Where do you people with your lever actions? Our rolling blocks are the way to go. You're using a matchlock? Just use a bow. You can shoot faster. They're better. Well, what I'm so. saying, what happens if it goes down? Uh, then just, you go home. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> you pack up and go home. Yeah, you just get you just send rounds down range, and you know you're gonna miss. Uh, speaking yeah. of sending down rounds down range, knowing you're <laughs> going to miss this next one, I think is uh, is really neat. Magpul is releasing a PMAG uh, for Glock compatible uh, PCCs. So this is this is a, a, a oh. pistol mag for uh, Glock compatible PCCs that takes 50 rounds. So PCC division in the U.S. is going to get real weird. Because <laughs> I think I'll reload five matches down. <laughs> yeah, it's, you don't need to reload, reload between your stages. Just keep running and Just go. Uh, That'll yeah, be it's, fun. It's uh, it's not compatible with Glock mags, though. It looks like a Glock mag, but it is not compatible not. with Glock uh, hmm. handguns. At least that's what it says it is. I wonder if it's compatible with your uh, non-Glock handguns and that kind of thing. It says it's the result of weight of the loaded magazine and the current magazine release in the handgun. So I'm sure somebody will release a stronger mag. Yeah. Oh, release. it's just the mag release then. Yeah, that's oh, what it's who about. cares? Who cares? Put a, put just a just hold in it there. in. <laughs> if uh, if it's just the mag catch that uh, doesn't uh, hold on enough, and you could just put a new spring in, and then imagine running like a three gun match where you're running a D60 on your AR, uh, a D50 on your Glock 34. And uh, and some of them big ten or twenty round mags on your uh, uh, on your shotgun as well. <laughs> Just never reload. Your belt will be super clean. <laughs> <laughs> your hip won't be though. You'll get like yeah. uh, your you'll, get, you'll be getting your right hip replaced after a few matches. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of weight. Yeah, it's a bit weighty. Yeah. <laughs> Just have stronger. You'll just have stronger quads in one side. That's all. Just buy a buy an exoskeleton. That'll be out next, and then you're good to go. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one I had here, and if you guys want to take one of these, just go go on ahead, uh, grab one of the ones lower down here, and then you can talk about it, and I'll okay. uh, 
not talk about the thing, but the next one is the Remington 700 CP arm brace. And I think this is mm. <laughs> uh, a clearly American solution for an American problem <laughs> because it's, uh, I believe it's too short to have a collapsible stock. So that's why they've got the arm brace on there, but it's a bolt action Rem 700. Yeah. Which is uh, kind of fun. Kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this will. Uh, I imagine they just include like a regular stock here for Canada for this guy, because we yeah. just have to meet that. What is it, twenty four, twenty six inches OAL? Mm-hmm. Yep. And oh overall lengths of the pistols come in at twenty seven <laughs> to thirty inches, so we're good to go That's for fine. that. Yeah. You get a two two three one. It's nineteen and a half. Ooh, <laughs> that's nice. And cl- that's nice and tight. Yeah. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so this uh, this Rem 700 comes, it's got like a, an M-Lock end on it, so it looks yep. kind of like an AR top, uh, and it takes, I presume those are, no, those can't be AR mags, because they got a release on the back. Those are probably AICS then. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, they've got uh, their X-Mark Pro trigger on it, uh, it's got the Remington Precision chassis, a 10-round mag, uh, lots of interesting things on it. Charlie, hmm. Charlie Foxtrot in the chat says got the five five six version. The first twenty rounds are a bear. Okay. Yeah, I imagine so. Hmm. Is he talking about the P mag or the Magpul uh, mags, or is he talking about this thing? He's talking about this thing. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, okay. my three hundred eight kicks pretty good, and it's got a long barrel on it. So can't imagine one with like this little stubby barrel and the little arm brace. Got to be. I imagine the blast is punishing. Good. I wonder if you put if you put a, a brake on this thing, it would probably be obnoxious. <laughs> uh, big fireball. Oh, awesome. and the the impact to your face as well if it was in like a short barrel. Ooh. Sweet. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you. It's self defense. It doesn't matter if you hit the guy or not. You just, you just be blinded. <laughs> You're like, yeah, get out of here, kid. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, next up is the Winchester Wildcat. Uh, this isn't new. Uh, no, they, they, it's, it's been released not. before. Yep. I, did you guys know how much it weighs? No. Uh, well, four pounds. Like nothing, right? Four, oh my! Oh my! That is so well, light. Look That's... at the big chunk out of the stock. The stock. <laughs> yeah. That's nothing. Plastic. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's all plastic. It is very light. Wow. Very very light gun. Uh, mm-hmm. We talked about it before. I just I didn't uh, I didn't pay attention to the weight on it, and that is uh, that is super lightweight. Might be good for yeah. kids. It's tiny. I really, it I is. really like the full size twenty uh, twos that are really lightweight for rabbit hunting. Because when you're mm-hmm. like hiking around in the woods, you don't sling it; you just carry it. If it's four pounds, pff, who cares? Just carry it. And uh, when you see a rabbit, pull it up and and take your shot. Right. Um. Okay. Yeah. I still like carrying it. You like carrying? Oh, with a sling? You're saying? With a sling. Yeah. 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 It's an option. It's an option. Okay. Right. When do you guys want to take the Sig Sauer cross rifle? Mm, just pulling it up now. Bolt action. Uh, one of Sig's oh. first rifles. Uh, it kind of like a, a tube rifle. So, yeah. Uh, tube rifles are, are bolt action rifles that look very much like an AR-15. They've got a yep. fully enclosed uh, fore end area over top of the barrel and uh, very adjustable rear stock. And, yeah, folding uh, rear stock. Right. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Super pretty. It is super pretty. It's super adjustable. I think mm-hmm. if Justin bans our semi-automatic rifles and this we still is what we're going to have to do, gun, yeah, we would probably shoot something like this. Yeah. Because at least this would be able. No, wait. Is this running ASCS mags too? Man, we need something that takes AR mags. Yeah, and then they'll probably declare it a variant. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps, uh, but <laughs> even though this is a bolt action rifle, it still uses AR fire controls, so your uh, your safety and all that kind of stuff are very similar to your AR. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of neat, um, and uh, yeah, kind of a kind of a neat rifle. Very cool. Yeah. I wonder what the price tag is on these. I'm looking. I'm trying to see. Yeah. There's stickers on the wall, but I don't. A lot of these don't have prices just yet because uh, usually when you're in product development, uh, when your product's just ready to show to the market, you're usually a little bit away from knowing what shop time's going to be and and all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah. Mm. And they're just introducing them. A lot of the stuff they're just introducing at a shot show where they want to bring out what's new. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Sexy. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, this yeah. next one, I don't think that the Diamondback uh, DBX 57 by 28 are, I don't think they're going to be very popular in Canada because this is going to be a restricted class firearm and it's shooting 5.7, which. I mean, it's neat, but like that's yeah. that's the part, part that was neat. Was it, it's shooting five seven, and we don't have very many five seven. There's no been a few five seven things lately coming out though. Yeah, that I've seen around. Put up their pistol, Ruger. and these guys yeah. are doing something out in five seven. It's kind of uh, it's kind of like people are interested again in the uh, in the platform. Maybe they yeah. all watch the new Bad Boys video movie, and they're like, "Hey, I gotta get <laughs> some of that. Make something that fires that rather than the P ninety. Yeah, and and that FN the the pistol that they have that's super expensive as well. Uh, the next one is the Benelli. Benelli. It's called mm. the Lupo. It is a bolt action rifle. It looks real weird. It's got some weird. Yeah, you know, it like looks Benelli ish. Like. Yeah, Benelli's yeah. are weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That MR one was weird. Is this their first bolt gun? Have they made a bolt gun before? I don't think so. <laughs> Anyways, that's kind of neat. I didn't really yeah. look up much other details about it, but it's got weird angles all over the all over the place. <laughs> but it looks like a Benelli. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They yeah, usually have weird angles. Benelli's are just and... odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they are quality product, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they work well. I have a few friends who had the well, it was the MR1, and I really disliked it, but they loved it and thought it was pretty okay. sweet. And mm-hmm. unrestricted, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why they'd buy them. I mean, if you didn't have the restrictions, you just run AR-15s, and that'd be the end of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there you go. Okay. Uh, ten ten cross mag production uh, release. We've talked about these before. They had uh, they had joined siege. I th- personally, I think they joined just a little bit early, and they started talking about it a little bit too early because I think they've been talking about it for two years or something silly like that. Um, right. But. They are in production and they are selling them right now. So they are selling uh, pairs of magazines. These are paired 1010 mags with uh, uh, a, a bottom piece, that a coupler that uh, couples them together. They look really nice. They're uh, they're available in multiple colors, which I wish were on this uh, CGN page here, but uh, they're not. Uh, and uh, this would be ideal for, again, three gun and that kind of thing, because you do get the... Uh, uh, the quick change uh, ability of uh, that 10 round mag, and it's got the coupler built onto the bottom. You can either couple it bullets facing forward or, or uh, reverse yeah. where one's forward and one's backward. You don't get both backwards. <coughs> That's not an option. But uh, no, nothing. Yeah. Crickets. Okay. So Gravel's going to carry them. Mm-hmm. They're going to be $55 or $49. Sorry, for two. That's for, for two, two plus a couple. And that's pretty good. So actually. like most most 10, wow. 10 round LAR mags are 25 bucks. So yep. 25, 25 and a free coupler in between. That looks really good because most of the couplers, like I, I, I've had a they're couple. Chintzy. Yeah, they're chintzy. And sometimes putting that coupler on the bottom loses a round for you. And now it's a 9.9 nine on both sides. Hmm. Um, and then sometimes the couplers come off too, because I, I've, I've seen that a lot where <laughs> guys, yeah. guys are running a 10, 10 and, uh, and they go to rip out one and, uh, the follower <laughs> comes off instead and they, you get the, uh, the snakes in a, in a can thing where the spring and the ammo comes flying out the top or the bottom yeah. of it. And, uh, while enjoyable to watch, uh, it's not what you want to have happen on a stage. So no, this one looks really solid. Yeah, it does. Oh, I'm very cool. curious about that one. Hmm. And then uh, PSA has put out a whole ton of stuff. I'm, uh, I don't know if, if it's worth going into all of them. They're really cool for the U.S. market. A lot of these uh, yeah. aren't really going to make waves here in Canada, but no. would be uh, really cool. interested in the U.S. I think uh, one, uh, I'll, I'll hold my words on that. The PS9 Dagger, they have a $300 Glock compatible, not Glock. Right, so it's, they call it the uh, the Glock Killer because people are going to be, they think people are going to be buying it. Barf! Of a Glock. Oh my God, calling something the Glock Killer. You know how many <laughs> pistols have come out there supposed to be the Glock Killer and haven't? Yeah, all of them. Just call it. Just call it <laughs> Glock compatible. This is like your <clears throat> IBM compatible uh, 486. This is your knockoff clone Glock that is super low priced. 
Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. yeah. Pretty, pretty, probably the guys at uh, PSA aren't calling it a Glock killer because that would probably get them sued. <laughs> Two ninety nine, ninety nine. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so like cheap. really cheap. That's like we've got <sighs> pistols here that are at that price range, but they are the Turkish pistols that don't have much of a uh, platform to uh, to go off of. Right with this, at least, like put put in or take out Glock <laughs> stuff, and yeah, uh, yeah. That's and really cool. PSA has got a better name than a lot of those Turkish pistol manufacturers do as well. Yeah, I don't know. I almost bought one of their ARs and then I read about them and then went, yeah. yeah. No. They're not well known in the U.S. because the U.S. has like a, a smorgasbord of ARs to buy from and to get the poverty pony stuff is uh, <laughs> is not necessary. <laughs> uh the next one Jeremy is, Jeremy said just call it a clone. Just call it a clone. Yeah. <laughs> it's Glock a clone. clone. 299 the Glock truth clone. will set you free. <laughs> you, want, you want a Glock 19 but for 299 instead of 5 or 600 bucks? Well, you come to the right place. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, I get it. Uh they've also got an AK called an AKE. It's got a an FN Cold Hammer forged barrel and uh, not many AKs are made like that. No. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, for an AK, those are interesting. Again, Canada, not so interesting. They've got a PSA-5. Now this is an MP5 clone, but Ooh. much cheaper. Much cheaper. That wouldn't be hard. <laughs> no, it's not hard because like <laughs> H&Ks aren't exact. They're not exactly giving those things away. Yeah. Uh, they're 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 taking a pretty a pretty hefty uh, profit margin on those. Uh, anyways, yeah, uh, they're releasing those. I'd imagine those would be uh, deemed an MP5 clone and therefore prohibited. So we're probably right. not going to see those here. No. And we won't see this other. Well, maybe I don't know. So they released this Jackal. It's a 5.56 <clears throat> long stroke piston rifle, side charging handle, and so far you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No buffer tube. Yeah. AR-15 lower compatible. No! no. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> we were so close to greatness. <laughs> if only we lived in a better country. <laughs> you know, oh, well. just for, there was another rifle that uh, someone was telling me about, and, and I was like, oh yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh, it was the uh, uh, the Brownells uh, 180. And they're oh, saying, the BR-180. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're but saying, oh, the they're, coming out, they're coming out with BR-180 lowers, and they're, and they're not AR-15. I looked at them, it's like, yeah, that's not an AR-15 lower, but you could use an AR-15 lower just as easy. In, in the same. Yeah, yeah so on. no go on that one. That one would be kind of cool. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, H&K, speaking of H&K, they updated their VP9. Uh, it's similar to like practically everyone else. That It's now optics ready. Um they're, they managed to squeeze a couple more rounds in their magazines. Their magazines are now higher capacity. Maybe they're not putting the bullets in backwards. Maybe they put them forward, forwards so they can fit more <laughs> men. <laughs> uh, Kelly, did you take a look at these ELR 22 LR bullets? No. They're okay. So the cutting edge bullets oh. has these 22 rounds. Now, yeah. A cutting edge just does the bullets. They just do yeah. the bullets that are on the end. They don't do the rest of it. They don't load them or anything like that. Uh, but these are some sexy looking 22 LR. They bullets. are. Yeah. They and there's really a company nice. that makes center fire 22 reloadables. You can mm. buy the brass. Uh, Say what now? You can buy center fire reloadable 22 LR brass? There is, there is a company somewhere I saw where, online. Where? Really? Yeah, yeah, and they're making Why? 22 long rifle centerfire, so you can reload them. Probably, so you can do stuff like this with it. Yeah, I don't but... know how it works. That sounds like pure witchcraft to me. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I just saw it online. I don't know if somebody's building a gun I for them like... or how that would work. But I would like to get some of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah. They, so they got to find a reloader. They got to find someone to to put the bullets on top of something. Uh, but they make the bullets, and they are super sleek and sexy. Twenty-two LR yeah. bullets. Mm -hmm. Nice ballistic tip. Nice. I was just gonna say, nice tip. Mm -hmm. Just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thompson is doing a bunch of like uh, engraved guns. Uh, I'm not a fan. Uh, you guys, you guys, tell me if no. you guys like them or are so, they gold plated? Ah, they're not. Gold -plated. No, they're no. just no, they're just bad. 
I, yeah. I, I'm not a fan. It, it's not something no. I would buy and like take to the range and, and shoot yeah. seriously or anything like so, that. So. Why don't you actually, did you just put him up? Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. So you put him up on the uh, live broadcast. Those of you that are watching, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeremy says, Bazinga. Okay. Bazinga. Um, yes, that summarizes my thoughts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they're in, they're Woodstock and they're in oh. basically engraved. Um, they like. They're... I think they've got a faux patina on them too, because the metal yeah, looks kind of like a brassy yeah, brush kind of a thing. Yeah. And they've also got laser engraving on that, and it says Iwo Jima, and it's got like some World reliefs, War like cut two. into it. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, these are not. I don't know. They're so fugly. <laughs> it's sort of like those people that take their car and then they like do a wrap, mm. and you look at it, and you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. oh God! Who did that? It would be like it looks taking... like it, it looks like somebody taking you know their Tiki one and putting gold metallic wheels on it. Yeah, it's they, had a, they, had a me, <laughs> they had a gangster on it. I want a version two. I can't. Oh, I'd love to find that. My dad would like these, but he likes singing fish and and singing Christmas trees. So he he would probably think this is pretty cool. <laughs> these things look like a GTA Five perk. Yeah, they absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh wait! I found the gangster. It's Jeremy Crane as well. Wait, wait, wait! I found the gangster one. Let me open this one. Copy image. Okay. That that being said, if I could own that, if I could own that uh, that uh, Thompson, I would take it. Yeah. Oh sure, because it's a Thompson. It's a Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. This but. other one is the Bootlegger uh, series, and uh, they they it says it's got a, like a Tommy gun that says Bootlegger on it. it says Wanted on the front. The back, the the forties for five says white lightning on it. So like you're a white lightning, you know, really shiner. Come on, <laughs> it's so terrible. These are like <laughs> Alabama <laughs> moonshine, Alberta moonshine. Running, <laughs> running. What I got myself? <laughs> yeah. Ding, yeah. Ding 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 <laughs> ding. This is okay. so so bad. Moving on. <laughs> Oh, but those are my favorite. Okay, the next one. Speaking of sad <laughs> cars. Oh, uh, the next one we got here. Uh, Savage is releasing an, an Axis Ooh. Two. Yep. Uh, precision in an MDT oh. chassis. So I see. Yeah. God, that's ugly. It, yeah. It's yeah, a it's Savage. Kind of angly and. and uh, that is just nasty looking. But if it's functional, so it I don't comes, care. It, but... It's a precision rifle in an MDT chassis, and it's Savage, yeah. and it's like. <laughs> It'll probably be lower priced than a lot of the other precision yeah, exactly. as well because it's an Axis action right. on it. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. means cheaper. Cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Cheaper, cheaper. I could but come still. to love it, I suppose, but God, that's fugly. But they didn't give a they didn't give a price tag around ish. Mm, no. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. The other thing they've done is release a whole bunch of other. So MDT and Savage have released a bunch of other chassis. Uh, they've released a bunch for the Rimfire series, so the A22, the, the yeah. B17, the B22, they all now have an MDT chassis available, and you can buy them like that, right? Just buy them straight from the factory with the all the goodies on there, so... That's cool. I guess MD- if you wanted to get like a an ORPS-ready 22 rifle, perhaps a B22, which is their bolt-action one, with right. One of these stock systems would be a better choice to go with, right? Yeah. I don't know. Somebody here like, says like Bullseye has them for six twenty five. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Yeah, six hundred US MSRP for some of them. Oh. That's not that bad at all. I wonder no. what the adjustability is like. It looks like they're using some shims on the back for the uh length of pull. It looks like the cheek piece is adjustable using a couple of thumb screws on the side there. <laughs> It's all very interesting. I was gonna modernize my 1020 uh, to get a cheap get a 1022 and modernize it for long range rim fire, but maybe I'll look at this because it'd be cheaper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Savage Arms has released a semi automatic right, okay. shotgun. They're putting out uh, a semi automatic that. Uh, does uh, two and three quarter, three inch, that kind of thing. Uh, they're quite heavy, 7.9 pounds. That's a mm. pretty heavy shotgun. Uh, the barrels are fluted, which is interesting. It's weird. Oh. Yeah. They, uh, they use a gas system. 
uh, and the gas system is one of those uh, put the gas into the action until there's too much and then put it out the front kind of a thing. Yep. Uh, and they come with a, a bunch of different uh, cheek uh, pieces hmm. to give you different uh, cheek swap welts out. on the shotgun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I actually don't hate this. <laughs> is, that, no. is that an endorsement? <laughs> I like I the. Don't the, hate this. Release. I'd like to try it. The release looks good. The charging yeah. handle, like coming from the three gun world, the charging handle looks very Just small to small. me. Small. <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah. that's coming. You can from fix my that, right? Probably, yeah. Just, Somebody yeah. will third party that. I imagine if they become popular, yeah. get mm-hmm. some tube extensions. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the the thing that's interesting on this one is that flexibility on the on the cheek pieces and on the shims on the uh, on the butt, like a lot of uh, yeah. uh, people are doing these days. Yep. Uh, so this would give you some uh, some really good flexibility. Uh, not sure on price. It's very heavy though. Seven point nine pounds is uh, it's heavy. a big boy. Yeah. So yeah, again, a lot of the stuff we don't have prices for availability in Canada, but it's interesting stuff, anyways. And their name is super cute. The Renegade. <laughs> <laughs> the Savage Renegade. Uh, oh man, that's such a bad pun. <laughs> Probably shoots light, being that heavy. Yeah, the, you know the uh, the Versamax is a heavy gas system uh, shotgun as well, and it's super light recoiling. Like, there's some guys who th- like using the Versamax in three gun just because you can just pound on the trigger and it's and it, it just runs. Uh, this next one I wanted to show. This is just a, a, a different stock that Savage is offering on their uh, on their Mark IIs. I believe it's a Mark II. Yeah, it's Mark II. Uh, and it's this really cool minimalist stock. So we've seen this from plastic stocks where uh, it's got a very thin forend and it kind of squeezes down uh, uh, towards the butt. Uh, it makes for like a, a trimmer looking stock and a, probably a little bit lighter towards the back as well. And I just thought it was very interesting that they did it in wood i imagine this is boyd's <laughs> uh but yeah it looks uh, looks very interesting uh one of the other things i i saw people mention i'm just going to pull it up just because it's uh it's it's readily apparent on this rifle uh laser engraving is like very very prevalent now so you see it's been in use on this rifle the uh finger grooves and the grip is all laser engraved the logos are laser engraved on wood here and that's <laughs> it's just being used a, a lot uh, by manufacturers these days. It's not horrible. I don't know if I would use it or not. I just thought it like it looked <laughs> really neat and uh, Ooh, that some people might uh, might be interested. It's certainly different. Yeah. Uh, Federal's releasing these are these are called uh, the Federal Solid Core. They're uh, uh, just a, a polymer coated bullet, but they're hard cast. So they're hard cast bullets. So uh, no lead. Yeah, no. Are no, they lead? lead? They're lead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're uh, just using a, a a different blend of, uh, of, okay. of lead, and they're they're polymer coated. Um, <laughs> now, uh, the reason why why I thought this would be applicable is if Canadians are looking to hunt with their forty four mag or their three three fifty seven mag, uh, this would be an option. This would give you like a nice big heavy bullet to uh, smoke a deer with or something like that. I was yeah. actually thinking of using my 357 lever gun next year. Uh, as long as your distance is good, it will yeah, do the job. Yard. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. The last one, and this one has a real interesting name. <laughs> the Ao Yi He? O Yi? Sure. O Yi He? <laughs> Keep trying. O Y He? O Y He? I think it's a Y He. It's uh, Tac Sol or ta- Tactical Solutions. Uh, Imagine like you took a Ruger 1022 takedown, yes. but yes. now it's a bolt, <laughs> right? And that's what it is. It's a bolt action. 22. 22. It uses the Ruger uh, uh, takedown stock. Yes, it does. Um, it's three point nine pounds, so it's incredibly lightweight. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> kind of expensive. Thousand bucks. It is expensive. Short mm-hmm. barrel. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure about it. Well, these guys make a bunch of uh, uh, like up, light. up, up. What do you call them? Uprated or or improved uh, Ruger ten twenty twos and a bunch of the accessories. Upgraded, for yeah. Them. Yeah, and I just this is interesting. 
Interesting. I, I find it amusing that you can put a compensator on it. I'm like, mm, suppressor, <laughs> sure. Compensator, it's a twenty. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> they say compensator on there. Yeah. They do actually. Yes, compensator <laughs> and silencer <laughs> attachment. <laughs> Come on, guys. Uh, silencer. You put a silencer on there. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's what they say. Com they say compensator. Silencer. No. No. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Well, Anyways. thanks for going through that. Yeah, I'm there's sure there's a, gonna be it looks more like there's out, some great but... some stuff coming out. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can even uh, talk more to toys is always good. Yeah, new things, different things. Looks like there's a lot of yeah, <laughs> weird. A lot of weird yeah. stuff. There was some. Stuff there was the odd practical out. one in there. There's there's the odd practical one. There was also a bunch of ultralight uh, <laughs> rifles that are being made, but they they make those every year, and, and really that's a choice of making them at a, an appropriate price point. Right. Well, Jeremy asked if it comes with 20,000 rounds at that price point. <laughs> <laughs> 20,000 rounds is 22. Yeah, probably should, yeah. eh? It is, yeah. actually. It, is, it should. Yeah. All right. Speaking of Jeremy, I didn't see any more. Um, we've been going through the listener feedback on uh, Facebook Live. So uh, did you guys notice anything that we didn't cover as we were, we were going through this? Trevor was yammering on in there about assorted things he's done and hasn't done and blah, blah, blah. But we didn't really say anything about it. Yeah, that's why I said, did you see anything else that was interesting? <laughs> no, I didn't. Man, he's bringing the heat, kicking the guy. Holy. <laughs> yeah. I should have been on here. Yeah, okay. Uh, so why don't we do listener feedback? Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full-service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, parkerizing, and Cerakote finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more at uh, dcgunsmith.ca. Uh, you can also check him out on Facebook, and you can also check him out on Instagram as well. He's posting some stuff recently, so some really, really cool stuff. So you need to go on there. Um, can, and I pull, really nice. can I talk about one of those guns on there? I see a sure. Browning A5 Stalker, in a three and a half inch. For yep. fifteen ninety nine, if you're into three gun or you want to get into three gun and you want like the best, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, uh, the best three gun shotgun, that's it right there. No the A five yeah. three and a half for fifteen hundred for fifteen hundred because you take that guy, you throw an extension tube on it, uh, you mangle up the port with uh, with your buddies with a Dremel over a couple of beers and uh, just good to go. It's three gun. Ready. Speaking of Dremels, <laughs> there was a um, a video that you posted recently with you dremeling. I wanted to uh, prove my street cred as a <laughs> legit gunsmith, and yeah. uh, I think I did it with that video. No, <laughs> you know, whack you with a roll that up was, dremel. That was <laughs> no, me bad, working over bad my. Adriel. That was a brand new A5 that I bought for fifteen hundred bucks that I pulled out of the bag. I didn't even assemble it. I just started oh. hacking at it with that dremel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bad. No, bad, <laughs> bad. And not only did you start hacking at it, you filmed it and posted it everywhere. Yeah, I didn't film the part where, so I cut it with the Dremel. I'm like, man, this isn't aggressive enough. And I pulled out a, a die grinder, angle started, grinder. Yeah, oh, angle grinder. I started going at it. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so so Ugh. if you want to do that, so the, the reason why the A5 uh, in three and a half inch is the best three gun shotgun in Canada is because you can run it dry. The tube, because it's a three and a half inch, you can make it hold seven shots of two and three quarter, and the chamber is one. It takes ghost loading, so right off the hop, you can get up to nine. If you run it dry, if you run most shotguns dry, you need to port load one. You need to put a shell in the port, press a button on the side, then turn it over and start feeding the tube. With the A5, you don't do any of that stuff. That's for the pours. You flip it over, <laughs> and you start shucking shells into the uh, tube. It will auto-load one into the tube. Serious? Yep. Okay. It'll, it'll auto-load one oh. into the tube, uh, into the chamber. Uh, so you do two quad loads, and that yeah. gets you from zero to seven plus one. Cool. And it's the it's super fast. So that's why that Damn. is the gamer shotgun uh, yeah. for Canada. In, in the I'm, U.S., it doesn't matter as much. But right. It's very so, but Denny has one, and it's $1,500. Yeah. So go on his website and buy it. Just saying, plus, right? Plus, he's a super nice guy, so you should buy stuff from him. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, okay. Why don't we actually get into our, our feedback? Uh, I know that you have to get out of here. Um, 
Dave, Dave is what his name is. Yeah. Dave. Yeah. Dave. Some random guy. Uh, you have to get out of here. So uh, if you have to cut it, just. Oh, well, I'll just okay. finish. But... Okay. Yeah, we're almost finished anyways. Yeah. Do you want to read oh, this one from Flavio? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hello, Slamfire. As a new firearms owner, I finally purchased the gun that got me into guns, an SA and 45 Colt and a Winchester 1873 in the same caliber. Nice. Yeah. Now I'm looking into reloading this caliber, not huge quantities like yourself. I don't think anyone loads huge quantities of 45 Colt. More like enough to go shooting maybe every other weekend or two. What would be a good press for a novice? Again, not pumping out huge quantities of ammo. Thanks for advice. Thanks in advance. Hmm. I really like the Lee turret, but there's a bunch of other options that have come out since I got mine uh, from mm -hmm. other manufacturers. So there's some other manufacturers that are releasing stuff now that um, that might also be a good deal. Um, I like the idea of a turret, especially for, for something like this. It's actually perfect for something like this because it's enough to do medium volume, but not like anything close to a progressive, but without the cost of the progressive. And it's not single. And it's nice and simple. Yeah, it's right. not it's not single, so you can at least do a cut like a couple of steps at, the, at a time if you want. Maybe not all of them, depending on on what you want to do. Because I find uh, loading powder on a turret press to be kind of a pain in the butt, anyways. Um, but you can you can kind of you got, you've got a lot of options with that at least. What would you guys recommend? I'm reloaded in ten years, so I've got my single stage rock trucker set at home untouched. So <laughs> yeah, I got to start reloading again, though. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I. I think that because I don't reload. That I think that probably what you just recommended probably is the best choice. But uh, Trevor might have some because he does a lot of reloading. He might have yeah. some some different advice. Maybe he mm -hmm. can offer it when he's on next time as well. Yeah. I don't think uh, like he's loading you know. a forty five seventy, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Forty five. Like forty five Colt. Forty five seventy. Those are really good rounds to reload for i don't reload a lot anymore because nine millimeter two two three 12 gauge it's stuff cheaper like just a to gun. it's not cheaper but like well not my, like it's almost if you calculate your, your wage you're like yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. that is horrible what am i doing with my life <laughs> i'd be interested to see how much he's <clears throat> planning on reloading he says not a lot but what does that mean you can't you can't shoot a uh, single action army in high quantity, right. like like you will your fingers will get tired from right. shooting before uh, two hundred rounds, let's say in a, in a right. In a, yeah, in a you're not going to shoot that much. So, yeah, hundred rounds maybe. Unless you get her in a semi. But then, yeah. like, forty five Colt semi. Uh, well, he's got a his uh, lever there. Got a lever gun. Yeah, his lever gun. He'll shoot. You can shoot a little bit more through there. But it's a it's a good it's a good round to reload. It's low pressure, uh, so the brass will last forever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's super easy to reload because it uses nice big bullets. It's got a rim case. Like all, it all points to a, a great round to reload. Plus, the savings on it are really good as well. It's not like nine mil where this it's selling for so cheap. <laughs> 45 Colt is still a little bit pricier, and reloading is a, a good idea. Okay. All right. Why don't you take this one from Rod, then? Yeah, you bet. Uh, Rod says, Midway at one time shipped to Canada even after ITAR came into effect, but stopped after they were fined for ITAR violations because really? they didn't want to risk it anymore. Uh, he sent us a link to uh, this link where... The U.S. Commerce Department assessed a $222,000 civil penalty against Midway for illegal exports of firearms, <laughs> scopes, and mounts. So, so last week we were talking about Midway and their um, shooting mats. So, uh, and the reduction in the ITAR. So, ITAR um, stipulations or regulations. So, I don't know if. They'll open that up. I can understand two hundred twenty-two thousand dollars is a, it's a kick in the pants. It's a kick in the pants, well, that's for sure. If, like the process was a pain in the butt. I don't know if you guys ever ordered stuff from Brownells while I yeah. effect, but it's like first they have to determine if they can even send it to Canada. Some stuff they can, some stuff they can't, and it's real weird trying to figure out whether it can or can't go. And then you got to get these Canadians to sign this document that says they're they're the end user. They're not going to resell it to Saddam Hussein or Kim Jong Un or something like that. Well, Saddam's dead, but okay. Yeah, 
<laughs> is he? Is he really? I don't know. There's pictures. Yeah, we're starting yeah. a conspiracy that's, theory that's here now. They, that's just what they want you to believe, Kelly. A man. Okay. When did they get to you, I'm Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> Who got yeah. to you? But it was a, it was a pain. For, like to sell a couple yeah, of little parts annoying. to the Canadians. Like I could understand why an American would say, like, this is one percent of our market. But uh, it was a freaking shooting match. Okay, go and ahead. And we got fined two hundred twenty thousand dollars because we didn't know, it, like, we didn't do it properly, and now we got nailed for it. I'd be like, <laughs> I'm not selling anything yeah. to this stupid country again. A lot yeah. of the stuff that you, that ITAR fell under ITAR too is like was ridiculous, stupid. stupid, stupid stuff. Like there was like clothing and stuff. Somebody told me, I'm like, really? Yeah. I can't buy this pair of whatever a belt. tactical there pants was, uh, or a belt. There was a yeah. Boyd stock that you couldn't get. You couldn't get this one Boyd stock, and I think it was the uh, I think it was for the Mark II. There's one tactical stock. It was black. And it was like, oh, <laughs> sorry, that one's my card. Over you, you, and it's probably random too. So, mm. okay. Anyways, maybe they'll maybe they'll start open it up with again. the relaxation. Yeah, oh. stupid. Because the, if it, if this stuff is no longer ITAR. And it's Chamber of Commerce instead. Maybe yeah. Midway will dip their toe back into selling to us poor Canadians. Back to Canada. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for actually sending this to us, Rod. If you'd like to send us an email, send it to slamfryradio at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you and tell us how wrong we are about stuff. So that's awesome. <laughs> okay. We do have some podcast reviews. We got two of them. So I wanted to say thank you to Stacy for sending them to us as well. I know that she's watching. I'll take the first one. It's from um, somebody, DWA Hutch. He's from Canada. It's five star rating. It says Friday morning. Is, fr- Friday morning is better. So as a relatively newcomer to the firearms in Canada, this podcast has been a hugely educational tool in learning about the specifics of what is available in the country and what the rules and such are. And the banter is top notch. Always. A- Always get a few good laughs. Uh, really appreciate the show. Have learned a ton from these guys. And gal, maybe you want to put in there. And guys, guys is a generic term. <laughs> I'll it's identify. For you people I know well. identify as a guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a ton from these guys, and I'm glad they continue to produce it weekly. Friday mornings are something to look forward to, too. I like Friday afternoons, actually, but <laughs> thank you. D W. I think I know who that is. I won't, I won't call them out on the on on the air, but I, I'm pretty sure I know who that is. Okay, all I right. Just got us banned from YouTube, even more than we were before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Before you have to leave there, Dave, can you actually read the one from the U.S.? Yeah, I wandered away. Uh, as a oh. listener from south of the border, oh, the title is Great Show. Author is Muddy673. Thank you, Muddy. As a lister, listener from south of the border, it is interesting to hear all of the stuff that has impl- been implemented in Canada regarding gun ownership. I fully expect the U.S. government to try and get there soon. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. I always enjoy all the talk about competitions from IDPA to Three Gun to Maple Seed. Speaking of Maple Seed, I would love to get your opinion on the Thompson Center version of the 1022 branded the T slash CR 22. Okay. Sally, have you seen them? I haven't seen any, but I did actually go on and I had a look at some of the reviews and and uh, some of the differences. Uh, the di- one of the big differences, it's a lot more expensive than your <laughs> stock 1022. That being said, it comes with a lot of the stuff that you would change out on your 1022 anyway. So, and even probably would change more on the 1022 to get where the uh, get where the Thompson center fire is. It so, doesn't have a stupid sight system. Like no, it doesn't. Does. It has peep sights. Yeah. So it has peep sights with a fiber optic front sight, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. It also comes with a Picatinny rail that's actually part of the receiver already. So that's fantastic. The other thing that I really, really liked about it is so the magazines themselves, they have a little piece on them that actually the last round, it locks the bolt back, oh. which is hmm. Nice. Awesome. Now you can take the 1022 magazines and use them in it, but it, do, it still doesn't lock it back because there's that little piece that's on the actual cool. the Thompson magazine. But they look almost identical. Um, there is it's a little a diff- stock too. It is, is a nice. Magpul stock. I hate the stock, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those 
um, mm. lighter weight, almost like the backpacker one. So I would rather it because there is no adjustable cheek well. There's I and it's a hollow. It is the hollow stock. I would have rather them use like almost like the Hunter X22 um, because you could change that piece out, but it's a more expensive stock. Yeah. And, uh, but it does come with M lock already on it, sling mounts and everything. So that's fantastic. And uh, the trigger group is a little bit better as well as, so the extractor is a lot longer. Um, you're going to have more. It's, I think, think you're going to have a better um, reliability with it as well. Um, machined a little better as well. So there's some pros, there's some cons with it. But if you actually, if you want um, to spend a little bit extra, you're going to get the perks uh, that you would normally have done on the 1022. I looked at some of the, so some of the um, reliability um, YouTube's uh, videos on it as well in the feeding and the shooting and it was actually you know everybody was giving it rave reviews so uh, the price difference between the two stock and the stock 1022 and the CR22 is like a hundred bucks so I would say go for it and I would actually change out the stock itself that's the only thing I'd change hmm. yeah so, I think it's a really good deal. Go for it. No, it's not expensive. I mean, Cabela's. No, they're not. They're uh, 550 Yeah. So, mm-hmm. they're right. not that expensive. Well, so you get your suppressor, or get, your, uh, get your compensator on it. Right. So, it has a threaded barrel. So, you can do that. Down in the States. Not here uh, in Canada. It would be so awesome to go out I with a 1022 a not and a silencer on it. So... Yeah. What I do, what I'd recommend is go to the YouTube videos and 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 have a look at it. There's some there. They're shooting them with suppressors. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was the loudest thing you hear is the click clack from the bolt. It is click clack click clack. <laughs> the bullet is like, man, eh, whatever. As long as you're using standard velocity and not high, it's uh, they're they're quite cool to shoot. Yeah, but. I would say do it. And then once you do it, I want pictures and I want you to tell me how you liked it. So, yeah. And then send it to Adriel to review it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Why don't we do shout outs? Adriel, do you have any? Uh, yeah. To uh, the guys from 3Gun for uh, for take for letting me come along and, and shoot their really cool stuff because uh, some of that stuff is very neat. It's good A to be lot of it. Of All of it was really neat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cooler yeah. than my shadow too. Very, very much so. Yeah, it's much cooler and, than my shadow one. I got to poke Trevor by put by doing it. Yeah. <laughs> that was the part that made me the happiest. Did you send him a photo and tell me you bought one? I posted it on Instagram. I'm like, oh, weird shadow, and he, <laughs> that was enough to set him off. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay, uh, Dave. What about you? Uh, shout outs to our favorite listener, Trevor Fallot, who's online tonight. So thanks for listening in, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for listening. Um, I'm going to give a huge shout out to all the ladies that came out to the range with me this weekend. It was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed it. And it was, you know, the hour, it was a few hours and they passed really quickly because we were having so much fun. So I just wanted to say thank you. And to Kelly and Tamara, I wanted to say thank you for bringing your ARs and your Tavors and because... It's always fun to shoot. So thanks. A little bit of variety, right? Yeah. Try it all next to each other. See what you like. See what you don't like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The weird thing is I, our range still has that rule. I was the only one who was a um, RSO. Mm-hmm. I'm going through the RSO course. So if we're shooting ARs, uh, I can shoot while everybody else was shooting. So I had to supervise them and then nobody could shoot while I was shooting. It's just saying. That's like for guests, I could see that. <coughs> they were mm-hmm. guests, right? So while you're... No, there was, two, there was two members as well that were with us. So Oh, it was because you were shooting ARs? Yep. Oh, that's weird. Just ARs? You could shoot like a Probably. CZ or something and you're good? Yep. <laughs> or like an XCR? <laughs> 
<laughs> those are fine to shoot by yourselves, but God help you, you shoot one Not of those. Not that uh, AR. Those right. Deadly assault rifle 15. I love my range. Yeah. I do actually love my range. It's a fantastic range. And it's only five minutes from my house. I count my blessings every day because yeah, it's I don't have much. Both the ranges that are around me are 50 minutes equi- 50 minutes both ways. <laughs> so 50 minutes mm-hmm. one way or 50 minutes the other way. Exactly. Mm. We just need to live closer to Leduc, that's all. Mm, that would be the play. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't we go into our Patreonies? We do have a new Patreone. Uh, Rob S. is sponsoring us for 223. Hey, thank you, Rob. If you would like to be a Patreon supporter, uh, we would love it if you could go on to uh, patreon.com slash pen backslash slam fire radio and, and give us a pledge. What that pledge does is allow us to give you this content every week. Uh, and in return, what we'll do is we'll send you some cool things in the mail. Adriel, have you gotten on that yet? No. <laughs> not in he's the been last busy month, this so. week. He's, he's been too busy oh, not welcome re- to not my life. <laughs> and not going outside in the cold when it's minus thirty. Now you're you know right. nothing's getting mailed. But I will yeah. mail some stuff soon. So Rob, if you've sent in your uh, your address to us, I will put. He it hasn't in yet. Okay, so good. I have Rob, why don't you do then. that? No, so, just take your time, Rob. So, <laughs> now for in your address. Be, we've been waiting for your address. Adriel's been sitting by the front door on his yeah. phone waiting for that. If the- you haven't received anything, send us an email. It's slamfireradio at gmail.com with your address, your name, and Adriel beyond that this week. Put like attention Adriel in the in the subject line or something. Hey, you. If you could put a blink emoji in there or something like that, <laughs> that would help. Yeah. Some dancing chickens. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, um, and at some point we're going to actually we're revamping our Patreon, uh, whatever we're doing for our listeners because it's currently not working right. Uh, so we'll at some point put out more content. We just want to put out well. different content. We want to put out some yeah. content for people, something that uh, that they'll like it's, and use. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can and we, can we swear more on the Patreonia? Uh, only one. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that would so give maybe. me some bad habits though. Yeah, I've like finally got into like I only drop an <laughs> bomb like once a year or so now. <laughs> It'll just be Adriel swearing for an hour straight. That'll be the episode. Just be Adriel going. The latest it all out. <laughs> FF and the FF and FF mother FF FF. FF, FF. <laughs> okay. It's, it's getting uh, off the rails. It means it's time to end the show. Yeah. So if you're going to buy some stuff and you're going to go to Cabela's anyways, go to our website and then click on the Cabela's link because they'll send us some money. So go do that if you want to support us as well. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about is supporting our national firearms associations. Go out and sponsor them or donate to them. Buy your membership. Renew your membership. Actually do a donation. Uh, and the reason is because it means that it go- all the money goes straight to towards them and the ones that we really like are the ccfr right now they're doing a lot of work for us as well uh they're just recently launched another explainer video so um but right now as as um, random dave said earlier we have some some stuff that's going on that's going to be causing us some issues somebody's at my door dogs are barking you know anyways also, check us out on Gunners Canada and like us on Facebook. We're now at 2,322. So we are really closing the gap on those little homeless children, orphans, yes. whatever they are. Yeah. Suck it down, orphans. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, today was the the Lapua. Um, we didn't say it enough. Do you guys want to say it a couple more times? Lapua, Lapua, Lapua. Lapua, Lapua. Lapua. Three thirty-eight. Lapua, Lapua, Lapua. I think. Lapua. I think. I think, Adriel, that in post-production, you'd, you'd go through and just add like <laughs> randomly stick it in the back. <laughs> I could. I could whisper it really quietly on repeat. Lapua, 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 Lapua. Just like the whole time. Yeah, Suddenly, yeah. must buy Lapua. I can't explain it. It's like you have Tourette's. Three thirty-eight. Three thirty-eight. Okay. I uh, just wanted to say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening.